Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bremster, and today I'm coming to you with another puzzle by Randall. Um, this is one I heard about and I really wanted to do because it uses a concept which I've used, I've seen in puzzles before, but I've never seen enforced as a constraint before, and it sounded a lot of fun. Um, so when I heard about it and I heard some positive feedback, I said, please send this one in. So this is Girth's Kropke Adventure. Um, and this is based around using Girth's symmetrical placement as a constraint. And I thought that sounded really cool. So I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, what else is going on? Um, skilling Sudoku is still running, still working on caging constraints. I swear it'll happen at some point. It, it'll happen. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the puzzle. Um, Girth's Kropke Adventure by Randall. So we have normal Sudoku rules apply. In every box, in every row, and in every column, we must place the digits one to nine without repetition. I'm going to skip over the Gertz rule um, and just quickly get the Kropke stuff out of the way. Digits separated by a black dot must have a, be in a one to two ratio. One is double the other. Um, cells separated by a white dot must be consecutive. Um, there's no negative constraint on that. So these are, could happily be in a one to two relationship or these could be consecutive or whatever. Um, not all dots are necessarily given. Um, but what we now have is Gertz symmetrical placement as a constraint. Now what Gertz symmetrical placement is, is it something that will often come up in Sudoku, but it is the phenomenon where a digit that is 180 degrees opposite on a grid, um, if you add the two digits together, they sum to 10. So if you were to grab that digit and that digit, they would sum to 10, the sum of those two digits. Or if you were to grab, say, that digit, it's 180 degree rotational digit would be that one. Or if I was to grab that digit, well, let's pick something a little off center, that digit, it's 180 degree rotational partner would be that. Um, that would have a rotational partner of that. So all of those digits, the different colors are all, if you rotate the, um, the grid 180 degrees, all of those will sum to 10. Um, so using that as a constraint is not something I have seen before, so I'm kind of looking forward to this one. Let's give it a shot. That is a condition of a Gerth symmetrical placement grid, because when you rotate the grid 180 degrees, this is its same cell. So this basically has to be a five. Um, but anyway, let's look at other stuff. So this is a run of Kropke dots, which sees each other. Now you can never put a five, seven, or a nine on a run of Kropkes. And because they all, it's three that see each other, I can't use three or six because it'd be three, six, three, or three, six, three. The way this works is it's going to have to go either one, two, four, Four or two, four, eight in um, a direction. So it's going to be that. The same is true here. So this will be two, four, and these will be one, two, four, eight. Um, because I can't put the one in the middle because it'd require two twos. Eight in the middle would require two fours. So it'll either be one, two, four in either direction or two, four, eight in either direction. This has a partner of here. So this has to be six or eight. This has a partner of here, which has to be six or eight. Huh. But this has to have two and four on it. So this can't have two or four on it. So this is three, six, which means this is eight. This can't have, well, that being eight means that is two, which is forced by this being one, two, four, because it can't have eight on it because this is eight. So this is one, two, four. This being one or four means this is six or nine, and it can't be six because six is over here. So this is nine. This is one. This is four. Four. four makes this six, which makes this three, which makes this seven because of GSP. Cool. This is two or four. So this is six or eight. Now, this is eight. So this is two because this was six or eight because of that, but it sees a six now. So this isn't two or eight. This is one and four which means these are six and nine. This is very strange. Okay, so this can't have two or four on it. So these all have to be three, six, because I can't put two or four on here. So it can't be one, two, it can't be two, four, it can't be four, eight, because I don't have them available. And once these are three, six, this has to be three, six. Now, if these are three and six, these are their opposing partners as is that. So these are four and seven. 
which means I can't put six or four on or eight. So this can't be three, six, because I don't have six available. It can't be four, eight, because I don't have four or eight. So this has to be one, two, because I can't do two, four either. So this is one, two, which means this is eight, nine. I'm sure there's scanning stuff I'm missing because this is weird. I like it though. I like it a lot. So this is also three, six because I can't put two or four on this. But yeah, I can't use one, two. I can't use two, four. I can't use four, eight. So this is three, six. So if those are three, six, that mirrors to here, which is now four, seven. Give me four, seven. Huh. Well, this can't be three, six, because if, if this can't be either three or six, so this is one, four or eight. If this is one, this is two. If this is four, this is two or eight. And if it's eight, it's four. So this is two and it can't be four. If that's not four, this can't be eight. So this is one or four. This is two or eight. So this means this is two or eight. This is nine or six. And that's a six, nine pair. So that's three, that's six. That three means that is seven and that is four. That six makes this three which makes this seven, this becomes four and seven, and this becomes six and three. This is a pair now, one, two, three, four, five, and seven. So this is three and five, which works, but that three makes that the five and that the three. So this becomes the five and the seven, which I could have got from the seven. This is very strange. So two would go with one or four, eight would go with four. So this is only one or four. So this is only six or nine. What's to bet I'm going to get near the end and realize I've done an incorrect mismatch with the rotational and I'm going to have to roll all the way back. Um, that's a one, four pair. So one, two, three, four, these are five, eight, and nine. Five, eight, and nine. Well, that can't be nine because that can't be eight. So if this is five or eight, this is two or five. Of course, these are the same triple. These are one, two, and five, which lines up with... Yeah, that all lines up. So this can't be three, six. So this has to have a two on it, I think. Yeah. Does it? Yes. It can't be three, six. And it can't be four, eight. So it's one, two or two, four. So there is a two on this. So this is the five and this is the five, which makes this the six, which makes this the four, which allows that to be anything. Okay, four is in one of those two by Sudoku, though. This may be a quick puzzle, but boy, is it interesting. Three, eight, nine. I mean, I'm saying it's quick, but I haven't finished it yet. Although that could just be complete blindness on my part. So there's a two on here. So this is one and this is two. So this is nine and this is eight. That takes nine out of there. Nine not there means there's no one here. Oh, that four makes this the two, which makes this the eight. This is not two. This is one or four, which makes this six or nine. I'm terrified I've made a mistake. There's no five in either of those. So there's no five in either of those, which matches up. That one, two pair makes this four. That maps to here and this becomes six, which lines up with that. This is a triple. 
five seven nine. So this should be five one and three one three five, and that lines up. This dot is all I've got left. Two is up here somewhere. I'm slowing right down. I'm, this could be one, two, I think. If this is one, two, this is nine, eight. And that doesn't work. If this is one, two, this becomes nine, eight, that becomes two, and I've got two twos in this column. This can't be one, two, it can't be two, three, it can't be three, four, can't be four, five, can't be five, six, can't be six, seven, can't be seven, eight, this is eight, nine. This becomes a two. So this becomes an eight, which makes this a four. That is not the easiest spot in the world. That becomes nine and eight, so this becomes one and two. That eight takes eight out of there. This three nine means that this is one and seven, which works for that being one and seven. There's no eight here anymore, which lines up with that. These are one, five and seven. So these should be three, five and nine. There's no five there. So there's, yep, no five there. So these become the symmetrical fives. And these all line up, but this is now four and six. I should have actually been paying more attention to box five anyway, because these all had to be next to each other. So I possibly could have got a shortcut. Not that this has been a long solve. Because these now, three and eight. So these are going to be two and seven which works for both the column and the GSP. So two, eight, three, seven have to be opposite each other. But that's not jumping out at me yet. No, it's not. So I've missed something else. Okay, so this is, oh, okay, here we go. This is a six, nine or the row, so this is a three, so this is a seven, so there's no seven here. This is a pair, one, two, so this is eight, nine. Oh, that four made that six ages ago, which made that nine and that six, which made that one and that four. That six makes that nine and that six, which means that that's one and that's four. There's no five here. That three, of course, makes that one, which makes that two and that one. The two here means that that's eight and that's nine. This one means this is nine. So there's no nine in either of those. There's no one in either of those. This three makes that nine and that three. So this becomes one and seven. That one makes that two and that one. This two jumps to here, making it eight and nine. The eight makes this three and eight, which makes this seven and two. This seven makes this five and seven. The five can jump to here because that's more fun and doing five and three. And that was a really short, but very fun puzzle. And I challenge anyone who says that that was too easy for the channel because I do what I enjoy and that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, Randall, for sending that one in. And thank you to everyone who told me I should take a look at this puzzle because, yeah, that was cool. Um, I look forward to seeing what other people can come up with or what Randall can come up with with more um, GSP as a constraint puzzles because that was cool. Yeah. Well, I hope everyone had as much fun with that as I do. That one is really cool. And... Um, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys what they're do seeing on the channel and uh, enjoying what they're doing with puzzles. Thanks everyone for watching and as always, good luck with your solving.